Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Anna and I really like talking about music and I'm quitting social media. <laughs> if you followed me on Instagram, that may come as a bit of a shock because I would post at least 10 stories a day and I really did enjoy what I shared there. Um, but I've gotten to a point now where the negatives of having social media vastly outweigh the positives and it's definitely time to make a change. The idea to come off social platforms first was sparked, I guess, by a conversation I was having with my dear friend and uh, radio co-host Naomi. We were talking about just how different music culture is now as compared to what we would consider to be the heyday of it was. Everything is so instant nowadays and the value of things dramatically drops because of that. Back in the day, you know, you would have to be constantly tuned into the radio or line up outside a record shop to get a copy of a band's latest track. Same thing with concert tickets. Gone are the days of lining up outside the venue for hours just in the hopes that by the time you get to the front of the line, there'd still be some tickets left. My main excuse that I've been telling both myself and other people for keeping social media for so many years has been that I need it to be, stay on top of what's happening in the music industry. Um, you know, discovering new music, finding out what gigs are happening, staying on top of trends, all of that stuff but that's just not how I want to do it anymore. I want to force myself to go into record stores and see what's on the shelves, ask the store for recommendations. I want to buy magazines and really read about what's happening in different scenes and valuing that information more because it's not so instant. Being more intentional in the ways that I involve myself in music, I think is going to be hugely beneficial to me. <laughs> this is not the only reason I'm quitting social media though and there's quite a few reasons and I'll go through them now and maybe a couple of them might resonate with you. Number one, I'm anxious that my online persona and real life personality don't match up and that people may be disappointed when they meet me in person. That one really hurts to admit because I think it, you know, clearly shows where my own self-worth lies in a ditch. Um, either way, whether that statement is true or false, it still presents a problem. If it's true and people are disappointed when they meet you in real person, uh, that's something that needs to be worked on. Um, I need to, you know, work on my person skills and uh, self-confidence, I guess. But on the other hand, if it's false and no one's thinking that then clearly I've got some insecurities that need immediate work and the best way to address that is going to be offline scrolling through other people's seemingly perfect lives because that's all people present on the internet um and trying to compare that to my own it is not going to help um but the problem doesn't exist if I eliminate the you know online persona <laughs> Number two, I was using TikTok and Instagram as ways to drive people to my YouTube channel, but that never really worked. And instead I was spending more time working on that than I was actually creating YouTube videos. I know some people may think it's a bit hypocritical to be quitting social media, but not quitting YouTube. But this is the only thing that I have that I really create. And that's not something I'm willing to give up. In terms of actually watching YouTube, I really don't watch a lot anymore. And it's only ever really when I'm like getting ready in the morning. I culled my subscriptions a while ago now and it's really only a handful of creators that I really, really do enjoy or I learn something from and that content enriches my life rather than just watching people live the lives that I wish I had. Um, I think I've been quite disciplined in, in that. Um, so YouTube doesn't really present a problem for me. I sort of just see it as an addition to books and documentaries that I consume um, and th those are also two things that I hope I will have a lot more time for now that I'm not you know doom scrolling. <laughs> Number three I need to protect my peace before I can do anything productive or constructive. Peace is not something that I've known for a very long time 
I'm well aware that no one can stay in a constant state of peace unless, you know, you're a monk living in the mountains. But God, I would just love like just a slice of it would be really nice at the moment. The way I think about it is I feel like I wake up a blank slate and then memories of the past days or past weeks seep in and those thoughts start whizzing around and then I have to think about my responsibilities for the day, um, things that are stressing me out that week. So that's all buzzing away. And then I get on my phone and I'm just taking in other people's thoughts and other people's rants and other people's stress. And then that's just <laughs> whizzing out of my brain over and over again. And it makes everything very blurry and I can't seem to find the thought that I need to focus on so that I can get what I need to get done, done. And once all these thoughts are in my brain, I can't get them out. It's impossible. To be honest, I think I should probably be tested for ADHD because I just cannot, like I, I can sit down and try and get some work done. And then an hour later, I've written one sentence and just focused on 15 different other things. And sometimes I could literally just find myself staring blankly into the wall for 15 minutes and not really realizing that time has passed. While there are very, very important things going on in the world that I do need to be aware of and contribute when I can, I know that I can't do anything helpful when I don't, you know, when my mind is constantly in turmoil. And social media is the, the, a huge culprit of this. Number four, I feel the need to document anytime I look remotely nice because I don't feel like my everyday appearance is adequate and I have the impulse to prove to people on the internet that I can look okay sometimes. I understand how utterly pathetic that sounds. And that's another one that was very hard to admit to myself. I think I always knew it deep down, but I just never wanted to face up to the fact that the only reason I was posting selfies or you know going on stories with a nice filter on was was to prove that I can look okay sometimes and that is just so lame <laughs> clearly I have a lot of work to do in this area and again this is work that needs to be done offline on a similar note number five I felt the constant need to prove that I'm an interesting or cool person with cool and interesting interests <laughs> I somehow, somewhere down the line, have totally forgotten that I'm allowed to enjoy things for myself and I don't have to share that with others. I'm allowed to just sit and enjoy something. <laughs> I can put a record on the player and just enjoy it without having to take a picture and sharing to Instagram what I'm listening to. It, I, the experience is the exact same for me. In fact, it's actually probably better because I'm focusing more. The people that are actually invested in a friendship with me will ask. And I know they will because my closest friends do ask. They ask me all the time about what I'm up to and the things that they know that I'm passionate about. So why the fuck would I care what anyone else thinks? Sort of leading on from that, number six, I'm worried that some of my interests aren't really my interests at all. It's just what social media has programmed me to like. So many times, I've sat there and thought, do I actually like this artist or this TV show or this art or, you know, these clothes at all? Do I like them at all? Or is it just because I've had them pushed so much that I feel that I need to like them? And similarly, I've started to feel resentment towards artists that I really do like, but I just see too much of. It's, there's just constant stories and ads and clips of the same parts of the same songs and I get to a point where I'm like oh my god fuck off and I don't want to feel about that way I don't want to feel that way about my favorite artists that's not cool number seven it has become exhausting to be constantly disappointed by people I have held in high regard it feels like every week another person I respect has been called out publicly for scummy scummy behavior and while I want to stay on top of, you know, who not to work with, it gets to a point where it's so fucking depressing and I just can't deal with it at this point in time. I've got my own shit going on and I can't involve myself in this. Also, people just out themselves publicly at this point. I can't tell you the amount of times I've been just so disappointed seeing someone that 
I, I was friends with, you know, posting something really stupid about all lives matter or having like the most obnoxious invasion day party ever. And I, I don't need to see that stuff anymore. I think the crux of this is just, I'm exhausted. I'm so burnt out and I just, uh, I need a fucking break for at least six months. Maybe forever. Maybe I'll never come back to social media platforms. It's been about five days since I deleted the apps. Um, it's been peaceful so far, but I know it will probably get harder. So I will update you on my journey through this offline-ness. <laughs> Maybe some of this resonated with you and sparked the idea of deleting your own apps. Um, if you need further encouragement, I will link a whole bunch of videos that um, encouraged me down in the description box below. This I suppose goes quite well with the Harry Diaries series. It's all sort of in theme of getting my shit together. So if you wanted to check out the first two videos of that series, they are on my channel. Um, and I also just, I talk about music industry, music lifestyle. So if that is your cup of rum, feel free to subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Have a lovely day, a peaceful day. And uh, thank you for watching. Ciao.